Hey, Kyle. How are you, man? Good, Graham. How are you? Doing great, dude. We're coming up on uh, Stand and Deliver WrestleMania weekend. These takeovers over WrestleMania weekend are always so special. And I talked about this with Regal earlier. And obviously, you know, you've been in NXT now for four years. You've been a part of many of these over the last three or four years. What makes these WrestleMania weekend takeover events more special than any other on the calendar year? You know, I, I might have to argue that because I feel like there's an energy around TakeOver that just feels special and unique every single time. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's because they're, they're few and far in between. It's not, you know, there's only five matches per car. They only happen every couple of months and they have just such a tremendous build and storyline and the performers are just incredible and the matches always deliver. You know, I think TakeOver is always just a really special event. And, of course, I think just because there's this buzz in the air, it's WrestleMania, the entire wrestling world has, uh, you know, their eyes on the company and, and you know, NXT is, is performing that weekend as well. I think that's kind of what, what creates the buzz. But I feel like that like any time a TakeOver is around the corner, there's this just energy that starts building. And that's just my opinion. I don't know if, if the fans or you feel the same way, but... Mm-hmm. And there's just something about NXT TakeOver that's it's hard to really capture and, and uh, describe the, the feeling and the energy that it really brings. You know, we get Christmas once a year with TakeOver. It feels like it comes five times a year. Like you wake up, you You're wake right. up TakeOver morning and it's like, oh shit, it's TakeOver day. You know, it's and not only that, but this year we got it twice. And of all the I TakeOvers, know. Regal brought up and it's crazy to uh, even think about it that we've had, God, I don't know, 30 four 35 maybe takeovers it's it's a lot it's a lot and we've yeah. never had a two night takeover before now so that just kind of goes wow. to show how stacked and how deep this roster is right now you know it's true it's true it's amazing is there anything that you would compare these takeovers to because i've always made the comparison i'm not sure if you're a fan but like marvel movies you can't go wrong with any installment in the mcu is there anything that comes close to a takeover where it's not like you have the rare miss, like, oh, there's a bad takeover. Literally every installment has been good, great, to amazing. Is there anything you can kind of compare that to? Um, it, it's, you know, really, I've never experienced anything like uh, an approaching takeover event and then performing on said takeover event. It's really, uh, it's a pretty magical thing. Um, but, you know, NXT, we've started doing these, TV specials every couple of months, whether it's Halloween Havoc or, or um, New Year's Evil, uh, you know, and or the Great American Bash, I think, was a TV special as well. And those are really cool, you know, kind of like takeover events that that we give away on TV. And I think that's helped bring a lot of eyes to us as well and just created more opportunities for other superstars that might not necessarily be on a takeover and they get that takeover experience with these TV specials. I think that's something that's really cool that we started doing and and hopefully we'll continue to do so. Yeah, and with this match with Cole specifically, and those TV specials are a lot of fun too. Like you said, I think Halloween Havoc was just an absolute blast, and I think that hopefully so we get more of those. It was so good. Hopefully we get more of those going forward. But with TakeOver itself, Night 2, you and Cole, unsanctioned match. Uh, when I spoke with Walter last week, he had mentioned that he actually enjoys aspects of his matches, not having them in front of crowds, because you can kind of hear like the chops more and the offense more. That was definitely evident with you and Balor. I mean, I, that was the first match in the Capitol Wrestling Center, so there is some fans there, but do you see the positives there in having a match like this? Obviously, having an electric crowd in attendance, like with all the other takeovers before the pandemic, is great, and that's ideal, but do you see the benefits of having a match like this in front of a limited crowd or no crowd as well? Oh, certainly. And, um, you know, specifically for, for guys like myself and Walter and Finn, we're hard hitting physical wrestlers. So I think our styles are suited very well for this, um, you know, with less fan interaction and it's a little more subdued and quiet, but we still bring the energy in the ring. It's not the fans that, that create the energy. Like they bring, don't get me wrong. The fans create energy and, and bring energy and they, they fuel you and they, you know, they make it so nothing hurts with the roar of the crowd, but there's something about the no fans and, and it's you bringing the energy. And uh, I think that's really where you can kind of see performers for who, who they really are. You know, when they're in that, they don't have the fans there. They can, it's just themselves. And it's just it's something that is pretty cool about it. Granted, I, I miss the fans. I can't wait until we have fans back. But this is a really unique time, and uh, it's it's kind of cool. And I'm, I'm kind of stoked that I've got to experience it and to, to have some of my 
career highlight matches with with little to no crowd. I, th- I think it's kind of neat. Yeah, absolutely. Is actually you got to look at the bright side, and I mean, even in addition to what you said, I think an added element is the fact that you can actually hear more of what you guys are saying in the ring. Like example, with the portrayal, you can hear everything that Cole was saying to you before it happened, after it happened, what you've said to him in your various brawls at the Capital Wrestling Center. So you, you don't really get that with a full crowd because the the loud noise kind of drowns it out. But it's an added layer of storytelling, you know. So it's cool to see that as well. Um, I, I got to bring up this Prime Target video because we were watching it last week. My girlfriend and I were watching it. These Prime Targets are always great. This one specifically, okay. though, was just phenomenal. And she watches NXT with me every week, but she literally turned to me when it was over and she goes, that was one of the best damn video packages I've seen this company do. And it was with yourself and Adam Cole. Uh, what were your thoughts on that package that aired last week on NXT? I was just absolutely blown away by it. And it's a true testament to just the... the team mentality and the production crew that we have here at nxt and wwe across the board like that takes a full team of people working their asses off to create such a piece it's a true piece of art like i was just blown away by it and uh you know it's 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 on it's almost unfair that you know adam cole and myself get all the credit for it but it was like a you know a ton of people (laughs) jeremy borash uh made that thing with with his team and it just incredible stuff so super proud of how that turned out and uh, if you haven't had a chance to check out the um extended edition of it on peacock i believe there's a a 12 minute version that just dropped maybe today so Mm -hmm. you should definitely check that out as well yeah and i'm definitely gonna check that out it was so good it was like almost like a movie trailer like by the time it's over you're like i can't wait to go see this but instead of a movie it's a match and it's like i gotta go tune in tonight to a takeover to watch this it was that good when you watch that back whether it be the extended version or the one that aired last week in nxt and it you kind of relive that history that you have with cole does this drive home and watching that back that is that this is at least in your opinion the biggest match of your career? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Adam and I have such a storied and, and long history together. Um, you know, we we've known each other for twelve years and we've fought all over the world as friends and as enemies. So, you know, it's cool to kind of see that sort of wrapped up in the WWE setting and just to see their take on telling that story is so, so cool. Um, yeah. Uh, what was the question again? Sorry. (laughs) No, it's okay. When you watch something like that, it it just kind of drives home that it's like the biggest match of your career, right? Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. And you know, I felt like since arriving here, uh, I mean, I've always put a lot of pressure on myself to, to really bring the goods every time and, and have, you know, the best match I can possibly deliver. And I feel since coming to WWE and NXT that, okay, this is the biggest match of my career. You know, first tag title. Yeah. First attempt at the tag titles, biggest match of my career. First War Games, biggest match of my career. Oh, defending the titles, biggest match of my career. (laughs) War Games number two, three, four, biggest match of my career. I feel like every time, every, you know, every couple weeks, it's the biggest match of my career. (laughs) Yeah. Thursday is no different. It certainly is the absolute biggest match of my career until the next biggest match in my career. So uh, that's just kind of how I, I look at things, and I, I take each match as it comes and uh, just focus on the time at hand and, and live in the present and uh, you know not dwell too much on the past or the future and just try and deliver uh, when the time comes. Yeah, it gives me major, like, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn vibes because of the history. Not only they have an NXT, and honestly, it's, it's weird because they're going head-to-head at WrestleMania this weekend, but because of the history they have outside of NXT before they got here, and the same thing with you and Adam Cole, both as friends and as enemies, fighting on various stages, everywhere from Final Battle to Wrestle Kingdom to now TakeOver. I'm not sure if anyone's ever done that before, so that's pretty cool. Um, but I had brought the same thing up in a separate question to Cole um, that actually aired as part of the press conference today, which is funny, so I'll ask you the same thing. You guys have had all these wars all over the world. He's won a majority of those matches, though you did beat him in a no disqualification match at one point. This is unsanctioned. That's got to give you an advantage, right? Um, I think so. I, I, I like to think so. Um, but, I mean, Adam Cole, he's the longest reigning NXT champion of all time. He's been in some absolute wars. I mean, street fights, no DQ matches before. I mean, he's been in more in NXT than I have, so mm-hmm. he's kind of got more experience uh, when it comes to that style of match. Um, so, you know, I'm just going gonna to do what I do every time, man, and that's literally just fight with all of my heart and soul and passion and conviction that I have. And, you know, hopefully I can 
put him down for good and finish this thing off and be yeah. able to move on finally. <laughs> yeah, and focus on the NXT Championship or whatever it is coming up, you know, down the pipe. Um, we're seeing singles Kyle O'Reilly right now in NXT, which is cool. Something new. We haven't really seen you on your own before the last couple of months at all in NXT. Uh, was a singles run something that you hoped to have while Undisputed Era was still intact, or was it all about the group at that point? Um, for the and it was always for the benefit of the group. You know, whatever gave the group the most success. And that's what I was on board for. Um, Bobby Fish and I, we were a tenured tag team coming in here. So it was natural for us to, to be the tag team of the group. And Roderick Strong, he way more singles experience. So, hey, let's let's have him shoot for the NXT uh, North American Championship. And, and then, of course, Adam Cole being the, the incredible competitor that he is, you know, chasing the NXT Championship itself. So... You know, I think for at the time it was benefit of the group, but of course, you know, as performers, we always want to evolve and grow and just you know get more opportunities. Um, so of course, you know, a singles opportunity was always something in the back of my mind. Um, and then lo and behold, here we are. Found myself in a match with Finn, and uh, things took off from there. And yeah, now it's me and Adam so yeah. we'll see <laughs> yeah and we've been getting a whole other side to you too during the last you know since the Finn Balor match the first one to take over what would that have been uh, 31 I think it was back in October and uh, you know the video package is promoting that match we got to see a whole new side of Kyle O'Reilly that fans especially newer NXT fans that weren't familiar with your work pre-NXT has been awesome, and it's obviously earned you a whole other audience, which has been super cool to see. Um, with Cole himself, when I spoke to him about a month or so ago, he had mentioned that you know he's known this entire time that it was he was the leader of the group, and everyone else like you, Bobby Roderick, were beneath him, blah blah blah. And then he was always like the de facto face of Undisputed Era. Did you ever get the sense while you guys were together for as long as you were that Cole was only ever in it for himself, or did the betrayal come as much of a surprise to you as it did for everyone else watching? I mean, in hindsight, looking back, I don't, I don't understand how I couldn't have seen it coming sooner. Um, there's always inklings of his ego getting in the way or, you know, him just saying things to us that would be like, dude, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's, it makes me sad in retrospect to look back and, and to, to see that that's the way that it went down. Um, it's unfortunate, but Hey, I was, I was hanging on to the undisputed era, man. I was ride or die. I was all right, whatever. I don't, well, let's make this thing work no matter what, no matter what everybody's attitudes are. And then ironically, it would be Adam that would just, he would make that decision for me. It, it sucks, but he, he's the one that put the stake through the heart. And, you know, sometimes the guy you're willing to take a bullet for is the guy pulling the trigger and, and as much as that sucks it's it what's done is done um and hopefully after thursday I, I can move past it have you had any extensive conversations with roderick and bobby about everything that's gone down in the last couple months or have you not really i mean obviously roddy and i know you have interacted on the show a little bit but uh beyond that have you guys had any extensive conversations specifically with bobby because we haven't seen him in a while due to injury um yeah you know of course uh kind of converse with guys that I've known this long about things that are happening in, you know, in the industry and that are happening to us, uh, as respected characters on, on TV. Um, I can't offer much more insight to, to either of them of what's going on or, or where my head's at. Cause I don't think any of us really know where our heads are at. I think we were all kind of taken for a ride in this thing. And, and Adam included, I don't think any of us really know what's next. Um, so just to, just to take it as it comes, man, yeah. it, it sucks. It's a, it's a unfortunate situation, but I know, you know, all four of us are incredibly talented performers. All four of us can hang on our own. So I think everybody's going to be just fine. Yeah. And I think uh, when I was talking to Regal about the match as well, we were specifically talking about you and Cole. He had gone on the record, and this is huge praise coming from anyone, I guess, but specifically him. He had mentioned that he put you guys, Undisputed Era, on like the same level of like 
a DX or any of these other stables that have been together for such a long time. I mean, that's a consecutive four year run. We don't really see that with a lot of groups beyond maybe like the New Day, for example. But other than them, we don't really see that at all. And he was willing to put that on the level of uh, all these other legendary groups in, in, in wrestling history, which is um, amazing praise, you know, coming from a guy like him and specifically had a lot of praise for you, which was cool. Um, was there ever any talk of you guys moving to Raw or SmackDown as a unit? Not just recently, but we go back a year ago. Like, it seemed tailor-made to see Undisputed Era on a Raw or a SmackDown when we had fans in attendance. Or was that, not, as far as you're concerned, um, nothing that was ever brought up to you? Um, nothing that I know of, uh, particularly... Uh, in regards to, to moving, um, you know, that said, I, I'm willing to do whatever is asked of me. All four of us are, uh, we, we bring it every night and, um, you know, wherever we would have ended up, I'm sure it would have been awesome. Um, but you know what, I, my focus and my passion is with NXT and I think that goes for all of us. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm proud to say that we, we were a group that stuck together for four years and, and to, to receive that kind of praise, man, that just feels so cool and is so awesome coming from a guy like Regal. Yeah, I mean, he had a lot of praise for you individually, too. I mean, there's a lot of comparisons out there, not just from himself, but from a lot of people, like the Daniel Bryan comparisons and a lot of other great people that have come through and actually, Daniel Bryan was there on day one, you know, 11 years ago, and uh, now he's on the Universal Championship match at WrestleMania, which is fantastic. Do you look to guys like him and other performers for inspiration at all? Certainly, and, you know, specifically a guy like Bryan. I mean, not a lot of us smaller independent guys were getting chances in WWE, and Bryan really, you know, kicked those doors open for a lot of us, and... Uh, I couldn't be happier for him. He's he's been a huge inspiration throughout my entire career. Like when I first got into wrestling, started training in 2005. Uh, Ryan Danielson was you know the king of the indies. He was the guy that all the tapes that I watched and, and wanted to emulate. You know, so I, I really uh, have nothing but respect for his career and uh, just admiration for everything he's been able to accomplish. It, it's truly amazing. Yeah, and for you, Kyle, what a hell of a journey. I mean, you've been a part of NXT for three and a half, four years now. You came and did the one shot against Aleister Black, but other than that, you guys have been Undisputed Era ever since then. Uh, is it crazy to have come to NXT as part of this group? I mean, was that something that was always the plan to come to, to NXT together, or was it really just more of a singles opportunity? Because it seemed like you guys all kind of came at the exact same time. Yeah, it's so wild how that all sort of developed. I mean, Roderick Strong was here uh, already, I believe. Yeah. And Bob, yeah. Adam, and myself came in, and it's it's so wild that you know how things worked out and us ended up together. Like there was a portion in Ring of Honor where Bobby, Adam, and myself were sort of acting as like a a, a group, like mm-hmm. the three of us, you know. And then of course Adam would turn on me and didn't see that one coming. <laughs> but uh, you know, this was that was something we were really excited about. And we're like, man, we should run with this thing. This feels good. It feels unique. We're riffing off each other. We're having fun. It feels natural. And you know, it didn't it didn't end up working out. But then for it to that idea to present itself coming into NXT, we were like, oh hell yeah, we're on board. And uh, that's why I think it was so successful because it was organic and we were legitimately all really close friends from the independence. We all came up together. We fought each other. We fought with each other, against each other. And I think that's, it's a true brothership and a true bond that was 100% genuine. And I think that's why it was so successful and it it had the longevity that it's had is because, you know, it, it, it was real. Yeah, and if we never see Undisputed Era again in any form, it will go down as one of the greatest stables, not just in NXT, but WWE history, too. Um, last question for you, Kyle, before we wind down here. I've always been curious. What was the genesis of the guitar riff during the entrance? It's iconic. You're a national <laughs> treasure. People gif it up all the time on Twitter. Uh, tell tell me about that process a little bit. Well, I'm certainly not the first to ever do it. <laughs> <laughs> There's there was one famous Hall of Famer. Uh, I think he's had a pretty good career. He, I saw him do it in the NWO <laughs> a few years ago. Yeah. But uh, man, I don't really know. It was it, we had the ti- the tag titles and that song just has some funk to it. And really, just when I come through the curtain, man, I just turn into some sort of psychedelic funky priest, just slapping the the bass. And I just I don't know what happens, but the music just takes over, and I uh, I just. I ride with it, man. And the fact that it's become this this thing that people enjoy is, is so funny to me because I'm really just acting weird, as weird as I can. <laughs> and uh, people like it. So, hey, I guess I'll keep doing it. And the therapy segments, too, dude, were hilarious last year. 
Oh, thanks, Ed. Those were great. Uh, I forgot to ask, but you mentioned it right there. Theme song. Do you have any insight? And if you're getting new music on uh, on Thursday or no? Uh, you, that's you're gonna have to wait and see, I guess. Uh, okay. All right. Keep me on the edge of my seat. So I'm looking forward to it. the match. Is gonna be awesome. Takeover, stand and deliver night two. You and Cole on sanctioned match only on Peacock. Kyle, this has been great, man. Thanks so much for the time. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you as well. Absolutely, Enjoy man. Have a great week. Yep. You too.